In this series of videos, you will learn how to create and use web services. In this module, you'll learn to identify when to include web services in your solution, provide an overview of a typical web service architecture, describe standard web service technologies, and locate sample applications to explore. A web service is a standard way of communicating between applications over an internet or internet. Web services define how to communicate between two entities. There's a server that exposes and provides the service, or services, and a client that consumes those services. You've probably used web services without even realizing it. For example, you might enter your zip code to get weather information. That weather information may be provided to that client via web services. Another common example would be providing a stock symbol and getting real-time stock values and information returned. Web services do not require the use of a browser or HTML. And Genero supports both providing and consuming web services. Web services consist of a server-side provider and a client-side consumer. On the client side, the client has to be able to understand a service description and then can consume the available services of that service. On the server side, the server exposes the services available, receives the input sent by the client, processes that data, and then returns some output back to the client or consumer. Web services are the Internet of Applications. They're self-contained, self-describing, modular applications that can be published, located, and invoked across the web. They're self-sufficient, meaning that there's no human interaction required. Web services perform functions from simple requests to complicated business processes. Once a web service is deployed, other applications, or even other web services, can discover and invoke the web service. Web services can be called from any BDL client, not just the web client. And it's important to note that web services can work between homogeneous BDL programs, such as a human resources and finance application, both written in BDL, that are exchanging data via web services, or heterogeneous programs, such as a .NET program as the client calling a BDL web service. There are many benefits to using web services, but some of them are listed here. Number one, it eases partner-to-partner -partner interaction. If various partners want to exchange data, they can adopt the standards of web services, and regardless of what their applications are written in, if that language supports web services, they can exchange data. This makes application integration much easier. It creates new business opportunities in that you have other functions available from vendors or partners that can be utilized. You can also provide some of your own uh, application data as a part of a web service. This gives businesses more and better choices, gives enterprises competitive advantages over rivals, and improves efficiency in trusted environments. Service-Oriented Architecture, or SOA, is a philosophy of how to connect systems and exchange data to solve business problems. SOA involves using data from various sources, reduces human work, and mitigates the effects of change. So SOA defines the overall services to be provided, and web services themselves are the means for implementing those services. In this slide, we see a typical web services architecture. Web services work by answering requests for information and returning well-defined, structured XML documents. The first thing that happens is the web service itself is built. 
You build your web service using your preferred programming language and then expose it. A client stub is generated from the WSDL in any programming language using your SOAP toolkit and then invokes your web service. We'll discuss the WSDL or WSDL as well as SOAP in future slides. The client formulates a SOAP request based on the service description. The web service forwards the request to a web service request handler for processing. The request handler is responsible for parsing the SOAP request, invoking your web service, and creating the proper SOAP response. The web server takes this SOAP response and sends it back to the client as part of the HTTP response. When planning a web service, you want to keep in mind the goals of service-oriented architecture, which are flexibility, reusability, and interoperability. Let's take a look at the standards that make up web service, which allow us to create web services that are flexible, reusable, and interoperable. In this table, you see the web services standards, or the protocols used to implement web services. There are a couple of standards communities that work together for interoperability. They are called the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium, and the WSI, which is the Web Services Interoperability Organization. On the left here, you see the acronym for the standard, what that acronym means, and the definition. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It defines a machine-independent way of exchanging data. XML Schema is Extensible Markup Language Schema. It defines the elements, entities, and content model of an XML document. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It defines the XML data flow between the server and the client. WSDL, or WSDL, is the Web Services Description Language. It defines the operations and access points of services offered by a server. HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It defines the rules for exchanging the files and UDDI stands for Universal Description Discovery and Integration. It's used for listing the services that are available. Before we take a look at each of these in turn, let's take a look at the web services types. There are two types of web services, RPC literal and document style. RPC is generally used to execute a function such as a service that returns a stock option. So, for example, if your client requests uh, stock information based on a symbol, stock symbol being passed to the service, the service then gets that information and packages it up in the standard and sends it back to the client. This would be a standard RPC style service. A document style service is generally used for more sophisticated operations. This might be to exchange complex data structures such as a service that sends an invoice to an application. Genero supports both RPC and document style services. A major standard used with web services is XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a specification developed by the W3 Consortium. XML allows you to create structured portable documents that are text-based, structured, extensible, and portable. XML allows designers to create their own customized tags, enabling the definition, transmission, validation, and interpretation of data between applications and between organizations. In this example, we can see that there is a root element that then has a child element called person. Each element has a beginning and an ending tag, Within the person element, we can see that there is another child element first name, as well as a child element last name. And within the opening and closing tags of the elements are the data. 
and it's the data formatted in an XML document that provides the both the request and the return information within a web service. The XML schema is a document format that provides the validation of the XML documents. It's a successor of a DTD, which is the document type definition, it provides a description of the document format, it allows XML documents to be validated for correctness, and in Genero, it provides the information needed to generate the client or server stub, which is the code needed to interact with the service being used. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, and you can think of it as the envelope for an XML document. It provides a way for applications to communicate with each other <clears throat> over the Internet, independent of platform. SOAP relies on XML to define the format of the information and adds the necessary HTTP headers to send it. While using, used mainly with HTTP, you can also send SOAP messages on SMTP or directly on TCP, for example, with the Genera web client. In this example, you can see our person and end person tag and the first name and last name all enveloped within the SOAP information. The WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language, and the WSDL is also called the WSDL. It describes the services offered, the location of the SOAP server, and protocol details. The WSDL is sufficient to provide all the information required to communicate with this server. In Genero, the FGL WSDL tool can be used to generate a Genero client or server from a WSDL. You can see here that there is a service named Calculator with a particular location and within this description of the Calculator service we can see that there's an operation called Add which has an input and an output information of Add Request and Add Response. Now it's this information that you will use to create a web service uh, from an existing WSDL or provide uh, WSDL information for anyone wanting to use your service that you provide. UDDI is an acronym for Universal Description Discovery and Integration. It's a web-based distributed directory that enables businesses to list themselves on the internet and to discover web services listed by others. You can think of it as the yellow pages for published web services. UDDI is a web service itself and therefore can be accessed with any web service client. There are some examples available in the FGL DIR demo web services directory. Those examples have a readme file that give you instructions on how to run them. In the other videos in this section, you'll see how to run the calculator demonstration and we'll also look at how to create the calculator client as well as working with the calculator server.